Yep. You read that title right. Uh, your, your crypto investments aren't looking too good right now, right? Because your crypto investments were uh, affected by market prices. And those market prices were heavily manipulated by billionaires and the state itself uh, in centralized exchanges where things were st stored with custodial wallets. So many uh, crypto people, when they tell you to get into crypto, will repeat this phrase like John 3.16. It's like the John 3.16 of uh, crypto advice from people who actually understand the technology. If you don't own your keys, you don't own your coins. L let me ask you. Um, how, uh, how many of you would think that you are in control if the police have you in custody. Hmm? How many of you would think that in custody implies that the person is free? Probably very low, right? Well, that is exactly what you're doing when you're giving your cryptocurrency to a custodial wallet exchange. You're saying, I want you to have control over my money. I'm going to give you sole control over my money. And if I want to pull it out, I have to hope that you have enough on your exchange that you've been honest this whole time with your exchange that I can successfully do with the cryptos that I earned, or stole, or whatever the cryptos were from, the cryptos that are theoretically mine, I can do with them what I want, because it's mine, right? Well, no, because you gave it to a custodial wallet. You gave somebody else custody of your cryptos. And nothing could be a clearer example of this than the FTX situation. Because, guess the fuck what? It collapsed, and here's why. I fucked up, says FTX founder in public apology. Binance backed out of the deal to acquire FTX. Investors in the company are marking it down to zero. Alameda Research is winding down trading and FTX is left scrambling for liquidity. But at least Sam Bankman-Fried is admitting he made mistakes. And, uh, what, what mistakes did he make? Well, uh, he, he fucking says that he fucked up, and he insisted the problems are limited to FTX's international arm, which is not subject to U.S. banking regulations. Ooh. Even within FTX International, Bankman-Fried says, local holdings are sufficient to satisfy the company's debts. However, he acknowledged that the exchange is experiencing a liquidity crisis, leaving customers unable to retrieve money they've entrusted to the exchange. Y'all remember the Robin Hood uh, thing where they said, hey, yeah, we didn't anticipate people uh, making money with our app, and we didn't have enough fucking liquidity and so now you can't withdraw the profits that you made using our app. We said that this app was going to be a way for poor people to make money, uh, Robin Hood style. Anyone can invest. Anyone can become rich. But if you actually become rich, uh, your riches will fade very fucking quickly before you can even pull them out. Because we're Robin Hood, and we're Robin you. Um, that, that is what happened with that. And it's the way it's going to work with all of these centralized, billionaire-backed fucking, uh, like, investment in finance apps eventually. Um, like, except the ones that have very, very clean-cut policies. FTX did not. And, uh, why did he, uh, have a liquidity crisis? Oh, 
well, you know, gosh darn it, he just had to, like, pocket $10 billion of customer funds. Yeah, because you suckers gave him your money. You put it in custodial wallets, and you said, here, Bankman Freed, uh, here, we will give you custody of our fucking money, and while we give you custody of our fucking money, um, please, pretty please, don't do anything bad with it. And what do you know, what he did was he uh, propped up his own trading firm, uh, by by taking ten billion dollars of the customer funds for doing it, yeah, that's pretty fucked up. <laughs> it's pretty fucked up to actively steal from your customers so that you can invest that money into your own investments. It's pretty fucked up, Sam. But you know what? It's also the price that people pay for trusting custodial wallets with their cryptocurrency and for treating cryptocurrency like an investment suddenly you'll get people like this who are 100 percent interested in being investment bros investing it i wonder why i wonder why this guy who basically created a massive uh investment scheme for himself uh, would be able to do that. Well, maybe it's because uh, a bunch of people were like, yeah, hey, I'm going to trust other people with these funds. I'm going to watch Green and Red Bar fight for dominance. And I'm going to then, like, allow these people, these billionaires, to be the custodian of my money so that I can quickly trade it. And so that I can instantly see the lines go zigzaggy across the screen. Um, cryptocurrency, initially, wasn't supposed to be an investment. What it was supposed to be was an alternative currency. It was supposed to be a way that the common person could have trustless banking tomorrow no matter what their criminal record was, no matter what their social status was, no matter whether or not they were, you know, in, in, a, in a country led by a tyrannical government that was, you know, actively dangerous to, like, their health, they could still have this money because it was a decentralized banking system. And because it was run by a distributed ledger technology whereby a bunch of different computers are verifying these transactions and you don't need to trust anybody else because you've got your own keys in your own non-custodial wallet. Possibly even attached to a mining node. That's what it was supposed to be. And then a bunch of finance bros, you know, the kinds of people who post what I do every morning. This is my rise and grind tutorial on Instagram or TikTok. Now you're going to watch my narcissistic, self-involved garbage with this very boring, corporate-style fucking <coughs> modern music aesthetic and my steel blue uh, filter over my fucking bullshit life where I spend a bunch of money to make a bunch of money. Um, you, you get to watch that because I'm so interesting now that I've done the same thing that everybody else in my field has done, and I've done it exactly the same way. And I wake up every day for the purpose of making money, and every day I go to bed making money, and then that money is money, and money, money, money. And look at this food I eat, look at my regimen. I idolize American Psycho, I jack off to Patrick Bateman, Andrew Tate, we do 69 on the couch every Tuesday. This is how I live. That's the kind of person you gave your money to. Or the kind of person who saw that and was like, man, I want to do that. That's you. So, when you did this, when you entrusted the future of cryptos to those who would value it based in fiat currency dollars, maybe that's the problem.
maybe you're entrusting the entrenched um, financial system, which this was supposed to be an alternative to, with your fucking money. Maybe you shouldn't do that and expect better results than this. Maybe the problem isn't necessarily these exchanges, even though, yeah, what he did was fucked up. And maybe he should stop, you know, trying to fucking fund politics and do a bunch of other shady investments with customer money and, you know, get a bunch of things from a bunch of shady sources, not the least of which are affiliated with the military-industrial complex during a time when Ukraine is, you know, all the stuff I normally say about them. Subscribe if you want to hear all that. But ultimately... You know, he shouldn't have done all that. Yeah, it was unethical, but it's also kind of something you should expect once in a while. And hey, if you need an investment that won't let you down, feel free to hit up Liberty Professionals. He's a board-certified uh, private investigator, and he also does remote security consultations. So if you need to secure your home, small business, or something else, feel free to hit him up. He's a longtime supporter and huge supporter of this content, so I'm only too happy that he's now uh, supporting the content again. And if you decide that you want to secure your life, feel free to hit him up. And, and, and you know, the, it, what's really funny is that these people build themselves as unironically like some sort of fantastically wonderful new invention. Like, this was an ad that they ran. This was an ad that they ran right here comparing their fucking crypto trading exchange to the fucking wheel. And so many other inventions. You'll see it. I have it on mute because I'm not going to remotely... Um, trigger a YouTube algorithm thing here where they say, oh, this has audio from another video, you know? <laughs> oh, no, a fork. This is just as revolutionary as the fork, and it gets worse, you know? And everybody's laughing at these things, but these things weren't laughed at. This was modern plumbing. All this stuff was actually adopted by these people first, because it was for the rich people. Because the rich people had the best ways to benefit from this sort of thing. You know? The coffee trade was huge with the rich. Because it was considered a luxury good. <laughs> you know? But they wanted to make sure that their app seemed like the next coffee. Right? Or the next democracy. Or the next wheel. Or as you'll come to see, the next light bulb. Or the next iPhone. Or portable music player. You know? And turns out that when you have egomaniacs like this running a platform for custodial money exchanging, where they have custody over your money, where they think, that that's just like sending people to space or the dishwasher. <laughs> Maybe they're going to be egomaniacs with your money and treat it like it's their money. Right? Just maybe? And Larry David was all in on board with this too. Like, you'll see it. He was all in on board with this because he got an acting gig to be like, the people who are always wrong. Well, say it. It's FTX. It's a safe and easy way to get into crypto. Yeah, I don't think so. And I'm never wrong about this stuff. Never. Franklin. So, in conclusion, what are they doing now? Where is this genius who compared himself? To the inventor of the wheel, the light bulb, the portable music player, space travel, democracy. Where's this guy? Oh, right. He's in fucking Dubai. Along with the CTO, because they don't have extradition. And because 
that's where if you're a rich fuck involved in global corruption, uh, that's where you go. You go to Dubai. So, this is where you end up. You know? This is the face of modern corruption. He looks all unassuming and geeky. Sort of like Peter Thiel. Sort of like Mark Zuckerberg. Sort of like, you know, uh, Jack Dorsey. Sort of like every one of these Silicon Valley people. You end up with an ego. And you end up thinking that it's totally acceptable, or at least that people won't notice when you rob them of $10 billion of their assets, and then suddenly when there's a run because of various economic conditions, you have a liquidity crisis. No, you didn't. You had a thievery crisis. If you hadn't have done that and mismanaged the company in general, fucking Sam, maybe you wouldn't be in Dubai right now, hiding from the authorities, because you fucked up. And maybe, if the common person would treat cryptocurrency like it was supposed to be treated, like a fucking currency, and not like a stock option, maybe there wouldn't be things like this happening, because you would have your non-custodial wallet where you own the keys and they can't take shit from you, unless they fucking perform a miracle. You know, or unless you're just incredibly bad with your seed phrase, or just some other much more difficult method of scamming a huge amount of people. Rug pulls. Fucking the next NFT airdrop. It doesn't matter. What matters is that these people are fundamentally exploiting an unethical system designed to benefit people like this, so of course it's going to eventually benefit people like this. And maybe the problem is that. Maybe the problem is that the system is set up this way, and it's not going to improve because it's FTX this time. It's not going to improve because it's not Robin Hood. It's not going to improve because your new guy is doing some new thing. Maybe if it's not non-custodial, don't trust it, don't leave your assets in it so that you can get your quick tendies, and maybe things like this won't fucking happen again. Who knows? I mean, certainly the people who started the whole cryptocurrency thing knew, which is why they didn't set it up like this to begin with, and they didn't ask for government permission, and they didn't need regulations, and they didn't need billionaire approval. Because, guess what? Guess what? That was the point. So your crypto investment crashed because you did the same thing that so many other people have done and participated in slow drain of freedom from the crypto market? Your crypto investment that you had on custodial wallets crashed? Your crypto investment that was valued in US dollars or your local fiat currency because it's the way people think it's valuable because they don't understand its true value crashed? Fucking good. Because these kinds of custodial exchanges are in the way of everybody trying to smash the fucking state. 